it's all about having a relationship. And I have been so excited to, to come here and to share what the Lord has given me to just to pour into you men. Because that's what it's all about with you guys. It's not about James. It's not about Adam. It's not about Stuart. It's all about the kingdom. And all of us furthering the kingdom. So um, so last year they invited me to... Actually, last year I was asked if I would drop the uh, bring the baptismal truck over here. Because a few people wanted to get baptized. And then they're like, hey James, by the way, we want you to share your testimony. And so I was like, okay, Lord, how do you do this? Because normally it's just boom and then it's... You know, I never really focus on the old man because that person's dead, right? Well, anyhow, I, uh, so I shared my testimony and it touched so many lives, you know. The Lord said go deep. I never go deep. But this time I feel like I'm supposed to go deep again. So, uh, you know, I never, I would have never, you would have never seen me in a place like this. Anything to do with a cross or anything like that because I didn't need it. I didn't need it, you know, uh, my family and I, we grew up very, very poor, um, I never, never had a dad, never grew up with a dad, uh, my mom had six kids, when, uh, when she was, when, when I was four years old, my own sister was murdered, so, that, that made my mom an alcoholic, so she pretty much, I don't want to say she blew us kids off, but she pretty much did, you know, my nephew came in the picture, because there was no one else to take care of him. So then I was kind of like kicked off to the side burner, the back burner, you know. And I never really understood how much that affected me until God got a hold of me and he started speaking to me. Because I believed all those years that I wasn't good enough. So I want to tell all you men here, everybody here, you are good enough. And you were <clears throat> bought with a price. Amen. Yep. Every single one of you were. This, your circumstances does not define who you are. But for years, that's exactly who it was for me. You know, um, in the Bible, I think it's uh, Jeremiah 1 5, where it talks about, hang on for a second, where it talks about he spoke, Jesus spoke in our mother's womb, to us in our mother's womb. Well, here's the deal Satan also speaks into us as well. So for me, the word that I really grabbed a hold of is I wasn't good enough. And I don't know how many people out here can say that because that's a lot of times that's what happens. We partner with, you know, that I'm not good enough. And then what happens? You know, you believe this lie, you believe this lie, you believe this lie. Before you know it, you're having your, well, now oldest sister hook you up with all these drugs, all this, just all this stuff, you know. I mean, I wasn't even nine years old. I'm getting high, getting drunk, you know. But it felt good. I felt like I was, somebody wanted me. You know, I'd see my mom, and my mom would just, she'd be drinking, you know. But there was always, uh, she always called me Jimmy Jam. Jimmy Jam, the boy that don't give a damn, which what she used to call me. And I didn't. I didn't. Um, I didn't know who, who my identity was. I didn't know anything, only that. There has to be something better for me. And for me, it was drugs. It was getting high, getting drunk, you know, and I'm sure there's many out here that can attest to that. So that was my lifestyle. Before I'm in junior high, I mean, I've done just about everything. And my sister, she became my best friend because she pulled me alongside, you know, she would she would hang out with me and all this. Because remember, I didn't have dad, you know, so she was she was my family. The drugs were my family, and and I loved it, loved it, you know. Nothing can pull me away, you know, um, of getting high, getting drunk, whatever, whatever I had to do. Um, you know how it starts out, you know, you start out with little things, and it just gets bigger because, well, this stuff ain't doing anything, you know. I mean, I'm sure you guys can relate to all that, right? Well, I can, and, you know, it was just one thing after another, after another, after another, so, before you know it, you know, I'm already kicked out of school over and over, expelled from school. But, man, that's like vacation for me because now I can get high. You know, I don't have to go to school. I don't have to get up early morning, you know, and all this. And my mom, yeah, she she wasn't happy with me, but what could she do? Nothing, you know, and I didn't care. You know? That's the bad thing of this is I just didn't care. 
And I know there's a lot of people out here in this room right now that just doesn't care. But you know what? He cares for you. I care for you. I don't even know you men. And I drove this truck. I drive this truck all over the country. But I want to tell you that we care for you. He cares for you. Because when the Holy Spirit's inside of you, this thing, the Holy Spirit, it has to come out. Okay? His love has to come out. And you guys, back in the day, I could care less about any of you guys. You know, and I'm just speaking the truth. I could care less about myself, you know. But when Jesus gets a hold of you, things will change. Things will definitely change. So before you know it, um, I started working. And the job that I was working, I mean, this was an awesome job because we had lots of drugs. I mean, we go to parties and we got coke on the table and all this stuff, you know. And so I'm loving it, guys. I'm in just in heaven, right? So fast forward, I've already met uh, this chick, you know, and I'm 20, 21 years old. I have a little girl. It didn't slow me down. Nothing's going to slow me down, you know. Um, <clears throat> before you knew it, I was, uh, she was almost two years old. And I would go on stay with jobs, the men, you know, and everything. And, and we would just get tanked. We worked all day long, you know, and then we get off to work, you know, it's time to party, you know. That was my lifestyle ever since I was nine, whatever. I don't know how, but that was what I lived for. I lived to get high. I lived to get a, do away with the, the person that was the sucky person for me. That's, that's who I was. I didn't want to face who I was. I didn't want to face that, that I don't have a dad. I didn't want to face that, you know, that we grew up poor. I didn't want to face, so what I did is I just hid it. I just put it underneath the carpet, you know, and, and it's easy for me to drink that stuff away, to get high and all these things, you know. The thing of it is, is we always have to come back to reality, you know. So what do you do? Let's get high some more. Let's, uh, let's do this some more, you know. Let's uh, cheat on your spouse or whatever. There's always something out there that the enemy is going to give you opportunity to do but you guys sin lasts only for a season it will catch up with you it's great <laughs> i loved it i mean i love doing things i shouldn't do but i also didn't know how much jesus loved me i didn't know anything about jesus you guys i didn't know he died on the cross you know it sounds funny but i used to tell people that that we were created for monkeys because of what's what the world said you know i never i never knew any of this stuff, you know. Um, so, so fast forward all that. I don't want to focus on the old man that I used to be. I want to kind of talk some more on the person that I am now. Because I'm sure you all have a testimony. Every single one of you do. And it would just rock us to the core. But I want to tell you guys, now is your opportunity to share your testimony to everybody. Because it doesn't matter if there's only one person or a hundred people. When you do, it's going to reach somebody. And then that can change their life forever. I didn't have somebody to speak to me like this right here. I had people to, hey, do this, do this. Here, hit this, hit this, you know, let's smoke this, you know, and all that. So I just want to come here, you know, and just, just to speak to you guys on your identity is not where you are right now. My identity is not, a lot of people call me James the, the baptizer because I drive this baptismal truck, you know, and all that. Man, that's not me. That's not me. This right here, I mean, this is what I love to do. And I would say this is probably more so my identity. But Jesus, he doesn't see me as James the baptizer. He doesn't see me as a man speaking. He sees me as a son. And for every one of you guys here, he sees you as a son, not the screwed up people that we believe that we are. And it took me a long, long, long time to realize that. In fact, 36 years. When I was 37 years old, I uh, surrendered my life to Christ. And and that's just because I didn't want to go to hell, you guys. I mean, who, who does want to go to hell, you know? But I didn't even know anything about it. It's just at the time I met this pastor, you know, I had just proposed to my wife. And... He's like, my mom gets all upset, you know, and all this. So I go to talk to him, and he's like, James, when are you going to stop running? You're going to you're going to end up getting in a ve your vehicle sometimes, and you're going to get in a vehicle, you're going to get a wreck, and you're going to you're going to die. You're going to go straight to hell. I mean, yes, that's blunt, 
But that's something that I needed to hear. You know, and is that loving? Probably not. <laughs> but that's what I needed to hear. You know, and with that, I uh, I gave my life to Jesus. But I was still an alcoholic, still a druggie. For two years, you guys, I was still doing the crazy things. You know, now with all that, I've already had, never was married, but I was with this girl for 14 years. Then now, by now, we have two girls, and it's just bad news, you know. So, because of the, my lifestyle, I lost to be able to be the dad that I've always wanted to be because of the drugs. I've never known anything other than to love to get high. Now I do. But all those years, could you imagine 30 some years, you know, of not knowing anything other than, man, screw it, let's just get high. It's going to take care of it. It's going to take care of it. But that's what, the, that's what Satan wants us to believe. So all those years, I believe I wasn't good enough, that I was replaced and all that. So it's just easy enough just to, you know, sweep it under the rug. But it always has to come back to us, right? So I'm kind of watching my time. Um, so there's a few scriptures that I want to uh, to share with you guys, if you guys don't mind. Um, so what I'm going to do is, did you guys already pass up five if you did it? Yeah. Okay. So I need a few people to just read one scripture for me, if you guys don't mind. Not everybody volunteer once. <laughs> <laughs> Two more people. Don't worry, I got five more people I need to read to. Alright. So we're not going to talk about the old James anymore. We're going to talk about the, the alive James, the person that's alive, the person that has life, the person that knows what he's called to do. Okay? So when I said yes to Jesus, I had no clue what I was doing, right? Well, guess what? Now I know who I am in Christ. And I share this with people all over the country. So what we do is we go out and pray for people. And we give a wristband in the Bible. We all have a wristband in the Bible, correct? Yeah. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask for five people to read. So I need someone to need number read number one. Sorry. Number one is thumb tab. So what you do is put your thumb on number one, open it up. And somebody that hasn't doesn't have a piece of paper. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. So what does that mean, you guys? For all have sinned. That means everybody, right? Even Stuart and Adam and me. Everybody messes up. <coughs> So we're all on the same playing field. It doesn't matter who we are now. We all mess up. That's why I didn't want to be up there. I don't like being up there. I want to be down here with you guys, you know. I mean, I'd sit next to you, but that's kind of weird. Okay, so yellow represents sin, okay? So if somebody could read number two. Okay, so for the wage of sin is death. So what's the wage? What you get, what you earn from it. That's right, what you earn from it. So what you earn from that is death. Well, that's not good news. Right? In fact, that sucks. So this says about the free gift of God. So our payment for us, so for me, and we've all done things that we shouldn't do. We've all done, and we all still do because that's what the word says, right? So because of that, that separates us from God, and because it's perfect, okay? So yellow is sin, black is death. So somebody read number three, please. So God demonstrates his own love. So how do you demonstrate his love? How do we demonstrate our love for our spouse, for our kids, and all that? Do we just say we love them? Okay, lay down our lives. We do what it takes for them, right? 
for them to be fed, for them to be clothed, for them to be, yes. Back in the day, I didn't know that. Well, I should have known that. Now, here's the deal. I did make sure I didn't work. But my drugs and all that stuff came first and then paid bills. But now I know that stuff's all wrong. But the thing of it is about this scripture is while we were yet sinners, you guys, while we were in this messed up mind, you know, partnering with Satan that we're not good enough and all this stuff, is God knew that I was going to be in this state. God knew you guys. We're all going to go through these things, you know, our parents and all this. And he, he's not going to allow that separation. That's why he has, that's the purpose of the cross, right? So while we're in sinners, he died for us. And we do not deserve it. So red is love, right? So number four. Is my read number four? For my grace you have been saved through faith, is that not of yourself? It is a gift of God, and as a result of works, for that one, no one may boast. Okay. So that's a huge one right there, you guys. A lot of people think that we're going to make it to heaven by what we do. So I'm not going to make it to heaven by driving about to the truck and baptizing people and sharing the love of Christ. That's not, no, it's not going to happen like that. What's going to happen is, is when I said yes to Jesus, and again, I had no clue what I was doing at all. And, and I'm sure there's many of you in here that maybe you have taken that step of faith and you don't know what it means. That's, that's perfect. But it's faith. That's why you've got to take that step. You know, you're never going to walk on water until you at least get out of the boat, right? So blue represents faith. Okay, so we got one more. Dave, can I give you a read? Sure. Number five. We don't need a Bible. Yeah. Here you go, right here. Oh, you know, I don't have my glasses. Oh, on. don't you know? No. Okay. <laughs> I got it. <laughs> that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is that, Lord. Yeah, that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead and uh, you will be saved. For with a heart a person believes, resulting in righteousness and with the mouth he confesses, resulting in salvation. Amen. Thank you, Lake. I wore my glasses. <laughs> Did a great job. Don't you look like Santa Claus? Yeah, explain Santa Claus. So that if you confess with your mouth. So what does confess mean? Speak it, right? So again, there has to be action to our faith. I meet a lot of people that say, oh, I believe. Well, Satan believes. And he trembles. So, you know, before you guys sat down, did you guys investigate these chairs before you sat down? Probably not, right? You just believe they're going to hold you up. Well, we wasn't there when Jesus died on the cross, right? But we, by faith, we believe that he did. You know, and how can I? It's, my lifestyle is, is my proof that the Holy Spirit's inside of me. You know, different people's testimonies is proof that the Holy Spirit is inside of them. Because that's going to be the only way that's going to change people. That's going to be the only way that's ever going to get a hold of me. You know, because again, remember I said I was all about doing the drugs and all that. Well, now the Holy Spirit gets me high. And this right here, I just love doing this right here. I love pouring into people, you know, and just speaking into them. Speaking in, into them for their identity. Because we are not created to be rugs, you guys. But the thing of it is, is we live most of our life that way. But I'm here to tell you, you're not a rug. So we need to stop being a rug. Okay? So, it says that if you confess with your mouth. And I'm sure everybody has heard this before. But is there anybody in this room that has not taken that step of faith and said, Jesus, I want you to be my Lord? <clears throat> Nobody? Everybody's all good? I mean, this is serious stuff, you guys. I mean, there's only one way to heaven, and that's taking that step of faith and saying, you know what, I don't even know what this looks like, but for one, I don't want to go to hell. That's why I did. That's the only reason why I did it. I didn't know that I could have a relationship. I didn't know that, that I'm going to be free from my lifestyle, you know, from the drugs and alcohol and all that stuff. I had no clue. But the Bible says that Jesus come to set the captives free. So if we want to be free, you guys, 
we first at least have to make Jesus our Lord. And that's okay. We don't have to know what it looks like. That's why it's called faith. Okay? So, so if nobody has, everybody's good. If the world ended right now, we're all good, right? Right? I mean, man, this is serious. I'm good. I, I believe I am. Not because of what I do, but because I have confessed, confessed Jesus as my Lord. Do I mess up? Absolutely. So I don't want you guys to miss this moment. Okay? I don't want you to miss this moment. Now, so I got a few scriptures that I want to speak to you guys about. Okay, so if I can get somebody to read the orange one. Now this, yep. Got it. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Jesus Christ. In Christ Jesus, sorry. So I want to keep reading that. For the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus has set you free from the law of sin of death. So when I give this piece of paper, I have the, uh, the scripture and also the page number. So um, that's a uh, page. Well, I don't know if we have enough time for that. But anyhow, there's no condemnation, you guys. <clears throat> no matter what we do, there's absolutely no condemnation. But what do we do? We condemn ourselves. We make ourselves look bad and all that. We give Satan power. But you know what? He's supposed to be right here underneath, underneath our feet. If we have a bad day and we're kicking ourselves and all that, that's because we've let him up. Don't let him up. Okay, so therefore there's what? No condemnation. So if Jesus, if he has forgiven us, why do we have it so, such a hard time to forgive ourselves? Because of 30 some years, you guys, I mean, come on. 30 some years that I had no clue about forgiveness. What does forgiveness mean and all that? So there's a lots of things, you guys, that, that we choose to not to forgive and all that. But we have to forgive if we do not forgive our brothers, and it doesn't matter what they've done for us, the word says that our Father in Heaven will not forgive us. And I am not going to allow one thing to come in the way of me having eternal life with my Savior. And when I say my Savior, my Lord, that's one thing I want to speak to you guys about too. A lot of people feel like when I, when I made Jesus Lord, which... When I gave him my heart, okay, so I didn't know what Lord meant. I didn't know what Savior meant. Pretty much he was my Savior. You know, if I was drowning, you'd throw a life jacket out there, that life jacket saved me. I'm going to keep on living my life. There's a difference between Jesus being your Savior and him being your Lord. Because when he's your Lord, he's going to be your boss. You know, I always like to use examples. So if a man that you don't, that you have a, your enemy or whatever, he punches you in the face. A lot of times we're going to knock him out, right? But when Jesus is the Holy Spirit's inside of us and he's our Lord, we need to be, I know it's hard to, we need to say, what would Jesus do? Because in the flesh, we want to take him out, right? Absolutely, because nobody's going to hit us. You're not going to touch me. But what would Jesus do? Okay, there's a reason this person hit us and all that, right? And I'm not saying go around and be a puncher bag. You know, that's not what I'm saying at all. Protect yourself, but the old man is dead, right? We haven't read that yet, but we're going to. Okay, so how about the green one? Um, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creature. Right yeah, that's it. You got it. He is the new creature. The old things passed away. Behold, new things have come. Now, let's keep going. Yep. Now all these things are from God, who reconciled us to himself through Christ and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Namely, that God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them, and he has committed to us the word of reconciliation. There you go. So how many of us try to feed the old man? 
Yeah. <laughs> but we don't have to, you guys. The old man's dead. And that's why if the church would just get this, if they would just understand that the old man's dead, Jesus, that person's gone. What we do is we try to bring him back to life all the time. Well, that's just how I am. You know, a lot, all that anger is for me. Well, Jesus comes and set the captive free. So when you have the Holy Spirit inside of you, you've made Jesus your Lord. Guess what? You can be free. But what do we do? We put them chains back on because that's part of us. We feel like that's our identity. That's not our identity, guys. Our identity is a son. When you make Jesus Christ your Lord, and you don't have to know what it looks like, but that's okay. Because he's big enough, he can take care of that. Then that's when <clears throat> things change in our lives. And we have to, we have to, we have to stop feeding that dead person. You ever go to a funeral and then try to feed a dead person? Probably not, right? Because they're dead. So what we have to do is men of integrity. And I say men of integrity because we all agree that we're going to go to heaven, right? Can we all agree with this? Most yep. of us or whatever? Yep. Yep. Good. And by not because of what you've done, what he's done for us, right? Okay. So we all have work to do, you guys. Every single one of us has a testimony to share. Every single one of us has a brother or sister, whoever, that still living in the junk, that still living for Satan. You're either living for Satan or you're living for Jesus. That's it. That's, there's no in between, there's no middle, there's no on the fence, or none of that. It's either black or white, and that's it. Okay, so just a couple more, you guys. So we got green and orange. I'm get a pink one. Yep. Uh, page 390, 1 Peter chapter, ten, uh, chapter 2, verses 9 through 10. But you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. A people for God's own possession, so that you may proclaim the excellencies of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. For you once were not a people, but now you are the people of God. You had not received mercy, but now you have received mercy. Mm -hmm. Chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation. That's what God sees, all of us. The question is, do we see ourselves worthy enough for that? It took me a long time to walk in that. And I'm sure I still doubt that. Why? Because I screw up. Because I sometimes feed the old man, but I know he's dead. And sometimes I need my wife to tell me, would you stop it? You tell all these men this stuff, now stop feeding the old man. That's what we have to do, you guys. We need to walk in our identity. And it says right there, a royal priesthood. A holy nation. I mean, do you guys get that? You read the Bible. The creator is your Lord. I mean, it sounds crazy, but it's common sense. But when you truly believe that Jesus is your Lord, he's your boss. I mean, when we read the Bible, man, I'm there. I don't know if you guys have ever been to Israel and all that, but, you know, you get to walk. You know, I, I got baptized, and I know Dave did, too, in uh, the Jordan River, you know, and all that stuff. This was really cool. It's really awesome. But we all have the Holy Spirit inside of us. And that's what's really cool. That's what's really awesome. That's where I get my high every single day, doing doing this, sharing with people. You know, there's been so many people back in, back in the day that's gotten a hold of me and said, hey, James. Basically, just to come short, I want what you got. I want to get baptized. So I go to them. So we used to party in a certain river, and we'd all get drunk there and everything. So what do we do now? I go there, and I baptize them right there where we used to party. So if Bill gets baptized, what happens is, now we use Bill to baptize the next person. It's discipleship. If, if our lives isn't producing more of Jesus, in a sense, you know, Remember, we don't want people to be like our old, the old people. When you truly know who you are in Christ, you're going to want people, and you're going to know people that they need Jesus. If you guys knew, if every person you knew had cancer and you had the cure, and they're jerks, you hate them, 
Would you give it to them? I mean, would you? I mean, would you have to think about it? I mean, there's a lot of people I would have to think about it. But I would say, what would Jesus do? So you know what? I would give them that. Well, here's the deal, you guys. You have the cure for the freedom. You have, it's Jesus Christ. You know, he comes to set the captive free. And I keep saying that over and over and over and over. But we have to stop putting these chains back on. You know, I would have never thought that I'm going to be even doing things that I do. You know, driving this truck around and just, I have witnessed this. So did Jerry. He's, he's with our team too. We go, Chuck, you know, we go all over the place and we just tell people how good God is. Why? Because we've been set free. And there's, we all need help. And we all need freedom, you know. So, you know, a lot of people is like, oh, how you doing? Oh, I got this, I got this, my anxiety, my depression, and all this. And I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with people, because I've struggled with that for years. But I'm telling you, if Jesus doesn't say, James, you have depression, and you're going to deal with that. That's Satan, you guys. So, I can't say my depression and all this, because I wasn't born with it. Now, if I say my right leg, I can say that's mine. I can claim it. Why? Because I was born with it. That's part of me. So what we need to do is watch our tongues, you guys, and watch what we say because we can either give life to ourselves or we can give death. How many, how many of us kill ourselves, in a sense? How many of us speak death over ourselves? You can be honest. I mean, I'm, I'm up here. I got the mic, and I'm telling you, I say stupid things all the time, you know, but we have to stop that, and we have to forgive ourselves, you guys, because he's already forgiven us, he's, he's way over here, and we're back over here, because we're still trying to think what we did, why we done that, what was stupid of me, and he's way over here, no, get back over here, because I want you to talk to this person here, as being led by the Holy Spirit. So when we're led by the Holy Spirit, you guys, we ain't going to be focusing on the dead man. We ain't going to be focused on anything else. We're going to be focusing on him and only him. Right? So those are just some scriptures that I feel like the Lord. Is there somebody else who got a piece of paper? Yeah. Galatians 2, 2.20. I have been crucified with Christ, and it is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. In the life which I now, I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in, in the Son of God, and who lives, who loved me and gave himself up for me. What, uh, what page is that on? 319. Can everybody go to 319? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's hard for me to see, too. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. So, can we honestly say we live our lives like that? I can say I know. I mean, let's be honest here, you guys. The, the word is right here. You know, this is our manual to live. You know, if you get a really nice car, a brand new car or whatever, do you do you just say, well, you know, take care of itself, or do you do the oil changes? Do, do you do the upkeep? You want to have this car for a while, right? So you want to do whatever it takes to keep it running as long as possible, right? Yep. Right? Yep. Makes sense? Yep. <laughs> so why don't we? Why don't we get in this manual right here, and why don't we believe it? And I'm not saying read this just because I'm telling you to read it. But you start speaking that out. I, what does it say? I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I who live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself up for me. That sounds crazy, right? No. But it's not. That's how much he loves us. And that's why we are here. That's why Stuart and Adam love you guys so much because they, they see the potential in all of you, you know. You guys have so many people you can reach that I would never have the opportunity to. And that's great. So everywhere we go, you guys, should be a mission field. Everywhere we go. 
There's things that we can share with others, right? Okay. So, do we want to talk about baptisms now? You guys, see, did everybody see the cool truck out there? Yeah. Yeah, it is pretty cool, right? Not as cool as the driver, though. <laughs> <laughs> That's the Holy Spirit. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so, yes, you know, I love driving that truck, you know, and I take it all over the place, but, uh, I mean, it's a magnet. There's not a whole lot I have to do. I just got to get in, find the wheels, and I got to take it where the Holy Spirit tells me to take it and all that. And then He does the work. But there's still work for all of us to do, you know, so, what's your name? Gage. Gage. So, Gage, if you hung out with me all the time, I would put you to work. And I would because I know the potential. And why? Because you have the Holy Spirit inside of you. And your Holy Spirit and my Holy Spirit, we're going to get connected. We're like, boom, let's just rock this place. So that's what it's all about, you know. So when we have the Holy Spirit, we need to realize, that, hey, who can we pray for? Who do you guys know? In the back of this Bible right here, it actually talks about who do you know that you can share this with? There's lots of people that we know have probably never heard this before, right? I was one of them. For 36 years, 37, whatever it was. That's, for, that's a long time not knowing the truth. That's a long time not knowing that Jesus died for, for my sins, my screw-ups and all that. You guys, we have work to do. So, if you've all taken that step of faith, and you've all, and I say all, all, because what it says there's all, right? All. You've all taken that step of faith and made Jesus Christ your Lord. So the next thing I'm going to ask you guys, have you taken the step of faith? Actually, the commandment, because it says to be baptized. Have all of you guys been baptized for? Every single one of you? Yeah. Okay, awesome. Yeah. Six years ago. Six years ago, praise God. So here's the deal. We all know, I can't say all, <laughs> that baptism does not save us, right? But it's a commitment, it's a commandment. You know, Jesus told us to do that. But it's a confession, you know, saying, you know, I'm going to live for you. And the cool thing of it is, is people, your brothers and sisters are going to see you get baptized. And, they're, and they can call you out. That's what I love about it. Hey, man, didn't you get baptized the other day? So then we have to, there's accountability there. Okay. So we don't just get baptized because we want to get baptized and think it's cool. Because a lot of people say, hey, uh, that's a cool drug. I want to get baptized. What does it mean to you? Well, I don't want to die. I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to go to hell. Well, see, there's, they don't even know the concept, you know. So, you guys, all of us, have you guys ever baptized anybody before? I mean, that's what we're called to do, right? It's not just live our lives what we want to do. It's what would Jesus do? So, when he spoke in our womb, in our mother's womb, who we were to be called, and then now you have this crazy guy up here. I ain't really crazy, but anyhow. Um... Speaking truth into you, your spirit is going to be like, yeah, you should be getting excited about it. Why? Because what I'm speaking is just things that's been spoken, spoken over you forever ago, even before you were born. And now we have to partner with that and say, you know what? There's things that I can do. I don't care if it's just reaching one person. You know, There's acts of kindness out there, guys, that we can do so much for people. But we think it's for somebody else. Gage, is that, that's not true, right? Gage, right? Yep. Yeah. There's so many things that Gage can do. There's so many things that Lee can do, you know. But we always like to for somebody else. Somebody else. Somebody else. So I want to empower you guys. You can baptize. You can pray for people for a healing. You can. You know, the word says that he give us all power and authority to trample on snakes and scorpions. How many people out there do you know that's probably carrying junk? Lots. Yeah, I know. All my family. Straight up. All my family. And the Lord has been using me one by one to reach them. I've been able to baptize them one by one. And I don't push it on them. I just, when I get the opportunity, I go. Because the Holy Spirit knows when the person's ready. We're not the Holy Spirit. You know, we get all, we get all gung-ho and get all set on fire with Jesus, you know, and the Holy Spirit and it's, we just want to go, go, go. I've been there. I know. <laughs> I was a big numbers guy. But now, this is where it's at. If I can pour into Gage as long as I can, make a disciple out of Gage, that's where it's at, you guys. 
It's not about me going out there and just getting the whole world saved. I'm again, I want to see everybody come to Christ. But I want to see something that's going to sustain. So if I had the opportunity, I would pour into this guy. All of you guys, you know, because that's what we're all called to do. So again, about baptisms. Is there anybody in here that has not been baptized that wants to get baptized? Or recommitted. Or recommit. Okay, so we got two here. Are you the... You came to me earlier. You wanted to get baptized, correct? Okay. All right. So now let me, let me ask you another question, you guys. Um, and this happens all the time. I'm just going to throw it out there. A lot of people said they, knew, they either got baptized when they were young, baby, or whatever. A lot of people do rebaptisms because of that. And a lot of people will rededicate their lives to Christ as well because they've heard the truth. And they say, you know what, I've lived this way, but now I want to rededicate. Does that make sense? Yep. This guy certainly yes. makes sense. He does. Sam Hollis. I love that guy. It's my buddy. <laughs> so is there anybody that is willing to rededicate? Gage? I, I actually have a question. So yeah. I was baptized as a baby. Okay. And then about five years ago, I joined uh, a church over here called River Valley. And I would went through their baptism. Uh, can you? I mean, is there a limit? How many times? No. I would no. Okay. no. You're just recommitting your baptism. Okay. And it, it, you're still going under, and you're still coming yeah. up. You're going when you're going when you're going into the water. Basically, you are dying when he when he died. You know, and I'm trying to think how, how the word says in Romans six. I was actually going to read that. So basically, when you're going in the water with him, you are dying with him, and then you're raised in the resurrection. All that junk stays in the water. But it's a faith thing. You guys have to believe that when I come up out of that water, I'm going to be different. It's not just get in the water to get wet. It's a faith thing. You have to believe that this is going to happen to you. And I want to tell you, whoever's going to get baptized, be ready to have an encounter. Be ready to have an encounter. Because that's what he wants. You know, every time people get baptized, it's never two people or whatever. There's always more. Always, all the time. And if there's not, that's fine. But I just want to encourage you all, all are commanded to baptize people. It's uh, Matthew 28. What is it, Lee? Uh, Matthew 28, 19. <laughs> hey, Jerry, you got a Bible? Yeah. Can you read it for me, please? <laughs> <laughs> I'm about out of battery. Okay. Start with verse 18. Yeah, go ahead. And Jesus came up, Jesus came up and spoke to them, saying, All authority in heaven, all authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Go therefore and make disciples of all the nations. Baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I commanded you, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the age. Amen. So we always leave out the teaching part. That's why I said I would love to be able to pour into you guys because it's teaching them, teaching them. Because discipleship is it's not just one sided. If Gage, if you and I were walking life together, if we were hanging out all the time, I'm going to grow from you, and then you're going to grow from me as well, right? Iron sharpens iron. Absolutely. Iron sharpens iron. So we do have a couple people that want to to get baptized. Yep. They're already gone. You, you, you want to get baptized. Change. And he's already, you want to go ahead and get your, uh, you got to change clothes or whatever.